Welcome, welcome to everyone. Um, it's really, really lovely to, to see you all. Welcome to the very first webinar for 2023. My name is Aviwem Kopozi, and I'm the head of division of the Clinical Associate Program. Um, I'll start off with background. Uh, we're an, it's concerned with the, the webinar. We started about three to four years ago. And these sessions were really for students. We would link alumni to the clinical associate students and the alumni would just share the experiences about their workplaces. And in the very end, we'd have a Q&A session about, um, well, the questions that the students had. So COVID then happened and the structure of the program moved to the online space. And we've been able to capture quite a lot of students by moving to the online space by inviting Walter Sassoudi University students, by also inviting University of Pretoria students. So we're hoping to have quite a large number of students that will be joining us uh, this evening. So a very warm welcome to everyone. I know we've got students, we've got friends, we have family, we've got colleagues from different universities. Please do feel welcomed. And in the very end, feel free to, to share, to discuss, to ask questions. We have three guests today, clinical associates who will be sharing about their experience. And they'll just be sharing their challenges, their achievements, and you're more than welcome to pop a question in the chat space. I'll highlight the objective of these sessions. Um, very often as clinical associates, um, as our allied, as our colleagues, we don't really have time where we come together and we share experiences. And one of the objectives of this session is really to bring about that community of practice and to come together as alumni, as colleagues, as students, so we can discuss some of the exciting ventures that alumni are going into. So please feel free to engage, to ask questions. And we only have an hour session so we will limit it to an hour, but note that we will have more sessions coming up. We're starting today. The sessions are due to be every first Monday of every month, and we'll have different hosts. We'll have different clinical associates who will just be sharing on the experience. First up, I will ask uh, Tesha. Tesha Pillay completed a Bachelor of Medicine in clinical practice in 2016. Currently, she's completing her postgrad diploma in public health. She worked in the public service in 2017 to 2019 at St. Apollinaris Hospital. She then moved to lecturing at Walter Sulu University to the clinical associate program, and that was in 2019, up until currently. So welcome, Tesha. Uh, we look forward to hearing about your journey. All right, thank you, Abiwe. Um as I've been introduced so nicely. My name is Tesha Pele. Um, I'm currently a lecturer at Walter Sisulu University. I'm from Pochepston in KwaZulu-Natal. Um, applied to study Bachelor of Medicine in Clinical Practice in 2014. After qualifying in 2017, I was placed to work in St. Apollinaris Hospital back in KZN, my hometown. Um, St. Apollinaris Hospital was in a mission uh, in a very deep rural area. So very interesting. Again, a lot of experience. Um, I worked in almost every department in the hospital um, throughout my two years that I've spent there. After which I then moved to Water Susulu University in 2019 um, as a lecturer for the Department of Family Medicine and Rural Health in the Clinical Associate Division. I was one of the first WUSU alumni to join the Clinical Associate Division as a lecturer. So my role as a clinical associate in my workplace, in my current workplace as a lecturer, I facilitate teaching and learning of clinical associate students on campus and at decentralized sites throughout the Eastern Cape. 
Um, I'm currently based in Malizo Hospital uh, in a small town called Zolo. Um, I'm actively involved in curriculum planning and development, um, as well as assisting with clinical hours at the current district hospital that I'm placed at. So while I'm a lecturer, I'm still able to have hands on clinical involvement um, in my practice as a clinical associate. Looking at the challenges I experienced and over and how I overcome them. So the one thing that made me want to leave the public sector and venture out is the lack of career growth um, that is currently in the public sector. Um, definitely, as well as being in KZN, you are very limited as a clinical associate. Um, not knowing much on career pathing. Um, the one thing that I did know when I was a student is that I wanted to come back to the university that I studied in and serve other students and become a lecturer because it was not so often that I saw a clinical associate that taught me um, and that I could relate to um, on, on that kind of basis. So which led me to pursue my postgraduate diploma in public health. This allowed me to take a leap and ask for an opportunity um, as a lecturer at Water Sisulu University. And as I mentioned before, I was the first Water Sisulu alumni to be hired by the Water Sisulu program of um, clinical associates that led me to uh, where I am now. So overcoming them, I think the, the most important thing is that you need to look at career pathing and the opportunities that are out there. We are often told that we are limited, but with gaining a network of clinical associates that are all over South Africa, I learned that there are things that we can go into, um, like public health that opens doors um, and many other diplomas that are out there and which I'm sure you'll hear through the course of this webinar. Um, so pursuing um, pursuing a an education after your actual degree is very important and there are a lot of opportunities that are out there. So in closing, um, a message to all students out there. Opportunities are all around us. It's up to us to create our own path and to open doors that will lead to our destinations. Um, I say that we are fairly new, although people may beg to differ with me that 10 plus years is a long time. I feel like it is not. We still have a lot of room to go, grow and a lot of doors to open. It's up to us to open the doors um, and go knocking on each one of them. Um, I recently had someone ask me about going into medical legal law. Um, and it's great to see that people are now opening their minds while I currently don't know anyone that is there, my advice was to go knocking on the right doors and see if you can open those doors because it's up to us to gain a path for everyone else that is allowed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tasha. Thank you for that. Um, I think it's, it's, it's always really nice to see clinical associates in academia. And it, it's great to hear that you knocked on those doors because you felt, you know, you, you want to teach and you want to contribute to the profession. And a lot of the times we think of other career paths, whereas we do need clinical associates um, even in academia. So thank you very much for sharing and, and for encouraging us that there are a lot of opportunities. Next, I'm going to introduce Jeanette. Jeanette is a qualified clinical associate from the University of Witwatersrand. She worked at the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Vara, so in a tertiary um, hospital. 
Ohaya. I'm, she's currently working as a clinical digital lead in the health informatics technology department at Netcare. And she's implementing the first electronic medical record system in Africa. So that sounds very interesting. Over to you, Jeanette. Thank you so much, Ms. Aviwe. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Jeanette. I was born and raised in Johannesburg. I'm a qualified clinical associate from FITS. Um, I would still consider myself a fresh graduate. I graduated in July 2021. Um, I have a keen interest in digitization in healthcare. And my journey in, as a clinical associate hasn't been that long. So, um, but she is my story. <laughs> So post-graduation, I started working at the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Chris Honey Baragana Hospital. During my time in the department, um, I really got some good exposure to the speciality. We were rostered with the interns and then we rotated throughout the department on a three monthly basis so that we could get exposed to all the subsections of the department. We were given the opportunity to cut under supervision of a senior registrar or consultant, and we were trained in the fetal medicine department to do ultrasounds. Um, I learned a lot during my time there, and I really enjoyed um, working in an academic setting post-grad. It eased me into the real world, and it built my confidence with the constant like teaching and support from my peers. Um, later on, I was offered an opportunity at Netcare to join the Health Informatics Technology Department to implement Africa's first electronic medical record system. Um, I took on the offer as I saw it as an opportunity to gain exposure to the non-clinical environment while still having to use my clinical knowledge. Um, during my years of training as a clinical associate, I don't think we really get exposed to how our clinical knowledge can be utilized in a non-clinical environment. So I think this opportunity really did strike my interest. So currently my role as a clinical, my role is a clinical, my title, sorry, is a clinical digital lead. And my role is basically to support the implementation of Medcare's um, electronic medical record system called Keron across all Netcare hospitals in South Africa. So the team that I work with consists of 21 members, which includes doctors, nurses, and there are five clinical associates, including myself. We spend about two to four months at each Netcare hospital to ensure it's smooth transition from paper to digitized records. This includes training, we support the doctors, identify their needs, and then we develop solutions to ensure that patient-centered health, um, that we still focus on patient-centered health, which is digitally enabled. So in summary, basically, everything that's done on paper that we do at hospitals, such as note keeping, ordering x-rays, blood orders, access to ECGs, CTGs, everything you can do through Keron, on an iPad and clinicians can even do this at home. So it allows the patient's lifetime medical records to be safely kept and easily accessible. It sounds like I'm selling the product a little bit, <laughs> but it is part of my job um, and I'm really passionate about it. So a personal achievement in my workplace this far, I think would be given the opportunity to co-lead the next coming project at the new UCT Netcare Academic Hospital in Cape Town this coming April. Um, the title holds great responsibility to ensure the successful implementation of the project. So I think that's something I'm super excited about. <laughs> um, so challenges, I would say I really enjoyed my time working at Barra. But there were many occasions where I would feel quite overwhelmed. We were often short staffed, as we know, in the public sector. And then clinical associates would often be the chosen ones to fill in those gaps. Um, there was no clear job description when I started and clinical associates would be expected to fill in like the roles of interns because we were rostered 
on, on the same roster as interns. So we really had to stand our ground and draw the line um, with the department. So open communication was important. And then with time, eventually, we managed to get like a clearer description of how we would function in the department as clinical associates, not as doctors. Um, so currently in this specific job, um, we get a lot of resistance from older doctors as they were born before technology. So they often get very frustrated as they prefer writing and doing everything on paper, but now they have to use an iPad. So it takes a lot of patience and also just hearing them out, working with them side to side. We work very closely with them. And then just, well, I think once they see the benefits and the outcomes um, of the system, they eventually, um, they eventually enjoy using it. And then the last thing I would say as a challenge is not to discourage any students now, but for me, the greatest challenge I received post-graduation was probably finding a job as a clinical associate. I applied for so many posts and I think maybe 90% of the time I didn't receive any feedback, mainly because there's just so much competition. Um, so later I realized that just reaching out to colleagues and physically going to the doctor's rooms to introduce myself was the most effective way to advertise myself and what I do as a clinical associate. So you would be surprised how many doctors are intrigued by our profession, how we can be of use to their work environment. It's just that they simply don't know who we are and what we can do. Um, and this is because we don't have that year of, you know, come serve and internship. So sometimes some of them are never, ever exposed to clinical associates. So, yeah, since working in private, I've met a lot of clinical associates who are trained and they work privately for specialists. And each of them would say that they literally just went to the doctor's rooms dropped their CVs, booked a five, 10 minutes appointment if they could, just to introduce who they are and what they can do. So just to close off with an encouraging or motivating message to the students, our profession is still considered fairly new. So don't be discouraged when you question about what clinical associates do. We don't, like I said, we don't have that year of ComServe or internships, so many healthcare workers are just not exposed to our profession. So use this opportunity to educate them and inform them of what we're trained to do, build relationships and connections with your peers and seniors as you do your rotations at the hospitals. You'll see that they will go a long way later on. And don't be afraid to advertise yourself. Take on the opportunity you get as it helps you grow as a person and it builds experience professionally. So I'll end off with a quote by Milton Bur Burley. If an opportunity doesn't knock, build the door. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Thank you. Uh, really, really impressive to see. Your, your passion is also so palpable. You can see you enjoy what you're doing, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's really nice. And what you've done is to take your skill set and see what can I do with that skill set, but still be an environment that I enjoy and how do I contribute to that? So thank you so much for, for sharing your experience with us. So I'd like to just turn over to Stefan. Stefan, what did I say? Matriculated in 2017. I want to say graduated at the same time. Um, so he graduated at the University of Witwatersrand in 2021. And Stefan is in a different working environment. He's working with a specialist. He's working with an orthopedic surgeon and he will just share on his journey. I don't want to say too much. Um, I'll let him do all the sharing. Thank you, Stefan. So as I've been introduced, my name is Stefan Swanapu. I matriculated in 2017. I graduated in, graduated um, from BCMP at WITS in 2021. Um, I'm currently working in the orthopedic sec uh, sector uh, or the department. And it's quite interesting because I worked in this very same department when I was doing my elective rotation. So I'm not sure if it's the same with all clinical associate degrees with all the universities, but I know at WITS we had that four week elective rotation. And basically during that time, we could choose to work anywhere we wanted to. 
So funny story is my father actually broke his ankle and he went to see a specialist. I then saw this as an opportunity to talk to the doctor and tell him about my degree. Uh, he then agreed the following year after my father broke his ankle to let me um, participate or like help or work for my elective, like with my four weeks elective work in his department. And that's actually how I gained the, that contact. So I'm definitely going to get back to the elective rotation of why it's so important, but let's just move on. So definitely with the role of a clinical associate in my workplace, I work under the direct supervision of the orthopedic surgeon. So he's got like his own private practice. He's got two rooms. So I moved between Net Pinehaven and Live Wilgebel Hospital. So he's got rooms at both. And then I assist him in theater on both. So basically there's like random theater days. I'll either be busy on a Monday afternoon list, Tuesdays, Thursdays, mainly Fridays, and then a lot of on-call weekends, for example, the December period, we were constantly busy. I think I did 43 alone in December only. <laughs> so that's quite a lot of uh, surgeries. And then after theatre, you're probably wondering, what do you do on the days that you don't assist in theatre? So recently, I've joined this practice. So now I'm taking care and I'm helping with the post-operative wound care. So basically, patients would come in 10 to 14 days after the operation. And then under supervision, I'd... Basically, just do basic wound care, look at the wounds, take pictures for the um, files. So basically, we've got also like an electronic system where, where we upload the files and we make notes on. So basically, I'll take pictures of the wounds and then we can monitor the progression of that. And basically, I'll just do everything that we were taught during uh, my studies at VITS during the hospital um, um, hours, if I can put it that way. So removal, rem removal of stitches and staples, removal of K-wire, applied and uh, cast and back slaps, also taking them off. And they're also interesting, like more in the private sector, fitting of range of motion braces and wind boots. So that was definitely a learning curve because you don't really see that in public in the public health system. And then also um, as part of my role, I can partake in future studies. So we're looking to um, conduct some studies so we can look at quality control, patient outcomes, and just overall patient satisfaction so that we can improve it in the future practice. And then other duties include progress notes, referral letters, preoperative assessments. I There's a lot of final year students here and second year students. I assume you know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's not that difficult or the transition wasn't that foreign if I can put it that way. So in terms of personal achievements, I'm currently standing on over 200 surgeries that I've assisted in. Uh, we do a lot of like a big variety of surgeries. So everything from like hip replacements, knee replacements, ankle arthrodesis, arthro where like fuse the ankles to small finesse procedures like tendon repairs of the hand and also like metacarpal orifice, so like a wide variety. And then by far my favorite experience is working alongside a surgeon guided robot called Rosa. So Rosa is made by a company called Zimmer Biomed. And basically this robot, and I would know when people hear robot, they get skeptic and they are scared that the robot will take over and <laughs> cause man, but I'm sure you guys will have some questions on that. So I've definitely attached a YouTube link there for you guys to view. So I'll share the PowerPoint with Ms. Aviwe. But basically with the robot, which makes it incredibly interesting is it takes, so it uses X-ray images in the, during an operation to make calculations. Um, so basically it makes calculations to get the perfect fit of the prosthetic. So if you're doing a hip replacement, it can literally take the images and then get the perfect measurements, get the correct angle for the fitting of the patient. And I definitely speak under cor correction, but definitely in the USA, they've conducted studies and there's been a reduction in revision rates of hips. So meaning that there's less chance of like dislocation stuff, which just overall improves the patient outcomes. So the robot is definitely very, very interesting. And I would definitely recommend watching a few videos if you're not squeamish, but I mean, if you're squeamish, um, I don't know if this is the profession for you, <laughs> but yeah, you can definitely just check out the YouTube link. So with the challenges, I think because I'm a fairly new graduate, um, like Jeanette also said, I think gaining familiar, familiar, like getting familiar with your working environment is a new space. And I think also in private, you're working with a lot of experienced practitioners like across the whole field. So you kind of feel out like, I must admit on my very first day, I felt like a lost child in checkers, finding myself in the way of everything. I just felt like I was a burden to everyone, but yeah, that was just a part of the struggle. But I think, I mean, who doesn't go through that? So 
uh, I'm gonna definitely gonna um, get to how I overcame those struggles. And then it's funny in private, there's a lot of protocols which you need to get used to. And also like scrub sisters or our theater work, surgeons preferences, like there's a lot of things you need to learn to be able to work with people. Um, and then also like, for example, equipment, I mean, we are basically for some um, surgeries like doing a hip orif, we'd need a traction table. So this is really fancy and expensive table. And I was really scared not to break it. So then you definitely need to learn how to use it and how to assemble and disassemble it uh, like appropriately without breaking it. Um, but yeah, with all these challenges, it was quite fun. And to overcome these challenges, I think the most important thing is to smile, greet everyone, be a friendly face, just make friends, be nice to everyone, especially the cleaners. Everyone there has got a purpose and they all deserve to be there and will definitely make your life easier. <laughs> I think be eager to learn. That's really, really important. Um, I think that is actually one of the most important aspects. Uh, never get discouraged. We all started somewhere. I mean, even the surgeon was at one point a student or first year student in a hospital. So, I mean, we all know where we came from and we should always just remember that. And most importantly, well, it's a lot of, like everything is important, but if you don't know, ask. For example, assisting in theater, there's, uh, assisting can be quite difficult, but you get used to it fast and you get used to surgeon preferences fast. And the thing is, there's a certain way of doing things. So if you're doing something incorrect or like not the way that the surgeon wants it and he's telling you to do it differently, just ask why, because knowing how to do it or knowing why to do it is much more easier to use basic common sense, understand why you doing this movement and why doing this and not that, rather than remembering preferences. So I think that's most important, just ask. So my message to students is definitely study hard. I think I definitely saw this with my own, when I was still a student at VITS, that you definitely, you get the slides, you write the test, you go to class and everything, but you're still responsible for the hours you put in at hospital. You're responsible for how many times you practice, like putting an IV lines, basic stuff as a student. I think the more you practice, the more it will benefit you in the future because it also makes you more comfortable with just everything. And that makes a transition to a new place or new job so much easier. So definitely just start hard and take it into your own hands. And then as far as the elective rotation um, goes, I can't, exclamate enough like how important this is because I remember and I know third year is really hard um so basically you're doing all these rotations and <laughs> sorry I'm just looking at the chat it's just really funny um sorry about this so basically with your elective rotation you've got those four weeks and a lot of people see it as an opportunity to take it easy if I can put it that way so, and I think this is actually where I got the opportunity to work with the surgeon, because if I haven't taken the opportunity to do my elective properly and put in the effort and make a good impression, because the thing is you can build contacts and do your elective, but if you don't make a good impression and you want to go a year later and ask for a job, it's not going to be that easy. So definitely. So I will also say the next point is don't be discouraged by other people's words and opinions. Because there are really a lot of opportunities, um, as Tesha also said, like if you're registered and it's within your scope of practice, the sky is the limit. You can really do anything. And I think knocking on doors and just trying every opportunity that you can, I think that's, that's really important. And also don't chase money. I know when I was still a student, a lot of students were worried about um, pay, if that makes sense. Like they were saying like, you can only work in a public hospital and the pay is going to be bad and everything. But rather go for the experience than money that's most important with because also like Jeanette said it was really difficult to get a job I think that's the most difficult thing about being a, a, a graduate actually of any degree is getting a job so I think experience definitely trumps money or anything like that because money will follow eventually but experience definitely most important and then I'm just going to leave you with a quote so fear kills more dreams than failure ever will Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Stefan. We can see, I hope you can see the applause. So I think let's move to a Q&A session. Um, so of the three guests, we do have a guest who is in academia, working at Walter Sisulu University. We have a guest who is in the digital health space. Uh, so Jeanette is working with Netcare, and we've got Stefan who's working with the specialist. 
uh, working with in the orthopedic sector. So that's quite vast. It, you know, it shows the, the how dynamic a clinical associate is, how we can take our skills and actually fit in, in, in varied spaces, uh, which is really unique about clinical associates. I'll start with the first question that was in the chat space. And I'm not sure if you addressed this, Stefan, but maybe you could elaborate. So would you say that your specific elective on the CV gave you a better chance in getting a job with the specialist? If you can talk more about the background there and the relationship that came thereafter. Okay, so basically what happened was with my elective rotation, I gained contacts. And I think I personally, so for months, I applied for jobs like Jeanette did and never even heard a response. And then I started asking around. Ms. Aviwe can definitely remember when I asked her about job opportunities. I asked fellow students that um, were with me. And then eventually I thought maybe I should just message the surgeon again and just ask if he's got an opening for a surgical assistant. And so basically I was really just blessed with the opportunity because surgeons really do have assistance. They need assistance now and then, but getting a full-time assistant job is really quite lucky, if I can put it that way, or definitely blessed. So I definitely think it's not much about your CV. The thing is, I've got the experience now, and I think stuff like working with the robots and completing theater time and stuff, I think that that definitely looks good on the CV. Mm -hmm. I think, for example, in theater, we work with a lot of medical reps. So we've got medical reps coming. They've got from different companies. Let's take the robot Zimmer, for example, with the prosthesis, like with the hip replacements. Basically, they scrub into theater and they actually help the surgeon and guide the surgeon because the surgeon doesn't always know exactly how the product works. So, I mean, even being a clinical associate and having the medical background and having theater time, that can definitely look good on a CV if you want to apply as being a medical rep to work and scrub into theater and work with the surgeons. So, I mean, there's a, a wide variety of jobs out there if you put your mind and put in the effort. Um, the other question is, so... Right now, you know, since 2021, I would say that you, you're enjoying the space. You're enjoying get to, to know the space. And within the private sector, you almost attach yourself to, you know, one of the orthopedic surgeons and, and their practice. Once you get to a point where, you know, you are experienced, your level of expertise has increased, how do you plan to now almost manage that with the colleagues around you? How, how do we mitigate that, the risks that might come with that? And maybe your, your you know, the orthopedic surgeon leaves. H have you thought about, you know, any of the risks that might come later on? Yes, definitely, because at, at this moment in time, I'm working as an independent contractor. So I've only recently, or I'm going to sign a contract where I'm going to get a fixed salary with theater as, or assisting money coming with that. But in sense, you get months that you do a lot of surgeries and you get money. And then there's months where you do 10 surgeries because the surgeon is away studying and stuff. So I think definitely building up your skills. And actually, while I was, um, so during this year, I was added to a WhatsApp group with different um, assistants. And basically, the one that I got a call from another assistant telling me that his main surgeon that works at Sunning Hill really need someone the following day and ask if I could fill in. And because it's still supervised practice and I'm registered with NetCan, everything, I was able to do that. So I think it's definitely really important to network because I think you can assist multiple surgeons during the week. You just need to be under the supervision and be registered with the re or the relating um, hospital for NetCare, for example, NetCare or Live. So mm -hmm. it's definitely... It's not that easy. It's like running a business or being an entrepreneur because you're responsible for your own money. So it's quite scary at times, but it's also really motivating because it makes you want to do calls. And I don't know, I really enjoy it. It's it's, it's really, it's different. Thank you. Thank you for, for answering those questions. The next question, I'll, I'll ask Jeanette. The question is, how did you get the Ops and Gaini position at Barra? And did you earn the same amount as the interns if you have any maybe insight into that. I think, you know, Google's probably wondering about a uh, comparison of remuneration and probably benefits. Um, so the time when I graduated, COVID was still sort of very much a thing. So my colleagues, actually, that we were in the same class, they had gotten COVID posts at Barra 
prior to when I started working. And then there were only, I think, a specific number for each department because they would have a specific budget for these COVID contracts. So at the time, I just asked my colleague if there's a post and if she knows anything. And then she just gave me one of the numbers of the consultants in the department. So I messaged the consultant just to explain who I was and sent her my CV. And then I think about a week later, the um, PA of the department reached out to me and then they offered me a COVID post as well. So at the time, um, uh, I just accepted it because I was looking for a job. It was a one year contract and it was specifically for clinical associates. So there was no like benefits or anything. Um, definitely did not earn the same salary of an intern, but definitely worked harder than an intern, I would say. <laughs> um but yeah so it was contracted for a year and then we were capped with like overtime so i think in a month we did 32 hours overtime and then if you go over you won't get paid and you really have to like chase after that hr department to get paid so that was also something i really didn't enjoy in public which was you would work so hard for your money get underpaid and still having to chase the department to pay you so i think even with overtime we probably earned less than an intern um but you know what i saw it just as an opportunity to gain experience um and just to do something um like stefan said it's not about the money. Obviously, everyone is different. You know, a lot of students might have to really, they have a lot of financial responsibilities. So that's also um, obviously something that I do acknowledge. So luckily I was staying at home at the time. Um, so yeah, so, so it was great. It was great exposure. And I'm really glad that I took on the position. And then after the one year, they actually extended the contract, but it was no longer a COVID contract. It was just like a normal contract for the department, but nothing changed. They no, there was no benefits with it or anything. It was included in your payment every month, and then you would just pay for whatever you needed separately. Um, so yeah, but then a few months into the renewal, I joined NetCare afterwards. So I hope that, that answers your question. Um, Jeanette, before you go, I'm going to to ask Mpumi's question. So she's asking all the, the guests, uh, what does selling yourself look like? You know, a lot of the times we speak about as a clinical associate, you know, go to your potential employer, sell yourself. What does that look like to you? So I remember hearing this too as a student when I was in one of these career sessions and it just like, it's such a broad thing. Like, how do you sell yourself? How do you approach doctors? But literally, you just build a CV. It doesn't have to be fancy or complicated. Just write a little. I What I did for mine was just a little bit of um, when I graduated, a bit of the rotations that I did. I think we had a template, actually, from... Mm -hmm. um the department like the clinical associate department at WITS before we graduated I sort of just followed that template and created a CV for myself and then you literally go to the hospital and you approach those doctor's rooms it sounds crazy but you for example you'll come to the hospital and every doctor in private is a specialist so they would have their own rooms uh, but they are receptionists, etc. You literally go to those rooms, tell the receptionist that who you are. You just graduated. You're looking for a job to ask if doctor does any cases, theatre, if they're interested in looking for a clinic associate. Drop off your CV. If they allow, you can even make like a five, ten minute appointment with those doctors and you'll be surprised that they do allow. And then when you meet up with the doctors, you sell yourself. <laughs> and when I say you sell yourself, you literally say who you are, what you can do, and ask them what they do on a daily basis and see where you can sort of fit yourself in there. Um, other than that, what I did was I would just find doctor's rooms emails as well. Um, so obviously, if you're looking for a spe specific speciality that you want to go into, then you can also search, for example, Park Lane is a, a Obzangaini, a maternity hospital. Then you'll search Park Lane Maternity of Zangani Doctors. Then you'll get on Google 
doctor's rooms detailed, etc. Get those emails and send your CV through. So yeah, that those were a few things that I did to sort of sell myself. <laughs> yes. Thank you. What one thing that's common about you know the, the three of our guests is that you all actually were very forthcoming. You you all physically went um and presented yourselves and yes, you, you sold yourselves and and look where you are now. So that's really a it's a valuable tip and 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 part of also you know separating yourself from everyone else is that you need to be ready to go physically go meet people network and um, if it means you do courses you know education furthering your education to make yourself valuable uh, those are really really good tips and and also the soft skills people look at the soft skills uh, you know what kind of a person are you those those are aspects that can help to 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 sell selling yourself. Thank you, Jeanette. Then I've got a question for Tisha. So the question is, it says, well, the statement says, congratulations for being the the first Cline faculty to join Wusu. Okay. So so the question says that once you started, once you joined the 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 division at Wusu. Did you notice any changes to how the students then, you know, related or engaged with the division now that you were there? Um, definitely, I would say that um, they had someone to ask a lot of questions mm. to. Um, looking at myself when I was a student, I didn't have anyone to ask those questions to. And I really got a shock when I went into the field and I had to come face to face with these challenges and no one prepared me for it. Um, so I think now students are more forthcoming with questions and the more they ask questions, the more interest they keep within the field mm. uh, of being a clinical associate because mm. before the only option there was was that you go into medicine and that's a reality a lot of people feel like the only option that they have is going into medicine now having someone come in that is a clinical associate and that holds another position in front of their eyes shows them that there are opportunities that are there maybe medicine is not my only opportunity maybe there's something that i can get into if teaching um, and being in academia is something I'm passionate. I know now there is a door open for that. Um, the question was also given if I, I if I can answer as well um, how selling yourself looks like. Mm. Um, I think it's it's very important even when the opportunities are not clearly put out there to you that you go ask. Asking is very important. So I went out and I asked another lecturer um, if he knew about a position that was open because I knew at his site he was understaffed. Um, and it so turned out that as soon as he got the go ahead to look for someone, the first person he contacted was me. Um, and that's how I got one foot into the door. And from that, we are now three clinical associate staff members within the Walter Sisulu um, Clinical Associate program. Um, so having those opportunities, sometimes you may be the first one to go and approach yeah. people, but it's so important because you are not just creating an opportunity for yourself, you create for a lot of people that are going to come after you. And it's very important the impression that you make because if I made a bad impression, they could have easily said, no, we don't want any more clinical associates. Let's stick with what we have. Um, so it's it's also very important to see um, Jeanette and Stefan in fields that I'm sure students never thought they was. Um, and now because the impression they made, they can also get into those fields. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tisha. Um, before you go, I want to start with this last question. So we'll just do one round um, of answers. There is a question from Megan. Megan is saying she's noticed that many healthcare professionals don't know how to approach the supervision regulation. This is a very important question. So in your different workspaces, and this is to the three guests, how did you address 
the supervision with your employers. Tisha, for you, maybe it will be before you in academia or yeah. Um, yeah, um, I think it's very important for your supervisor to know that um, you will not astray. Um, um, working in a public hospital, which was understaffed, it was it, it's it's very hard to get direct supervision and that direct supervision is very important in your first year of working. Um, I noticed that after two, three months, I'm, I'm sure less than two months of working in the OPD department, I was then left alone. Um, and those are challenges that you are going to face depending on the the environment that you are in. Um, the, the other issue with supervision was the prescribing issue as well. So while pharmacy might not want to approve your script, the people or the clinicians around you feel like, but they don't understand why such is happening. Um, and working as a team is very important. Understanding the team that you are in um, proves a lot along the way. So working in those teams are very important. They they give you the leeway. Um, I was fortunate, in, fortunate enough not only to be placed in the OPD department, but also maternity and surgical medical wards. Um, and with that, my supervisor went with me the first couple of weeks, settled me in, showed me the processes and then left me knowing that if I came across anything that I wasn't certain of, she knew that I would come to her mm. and assist from there. Great. Thank you, Tisha. Uh, Jeanette and then Stefan. Thank you. Um, so luckily for me, when I was working at Barra, so when I was actually practicing and doing clinical work, we functioned because we were rostered with interns, we functioned in units. So each unit would have its junior, senior registrar, its intern, there was us, and then a consultant as well. So there wasn't any time where I would be doing something that wasn't already discussed during ward rounds, etc. So I think because it was Barra's an academic setting, they already know how clinical associates are supposed to function and that it is supervised practice. So that's why um, during my during my employment there, um, it wasn't really a difficult process having, I didn't have to explain that we needed to be supervised, etc. And then obviously with my job now, because I'm not actually um, seeing and treating patients directly, um, mm -hmm. I haven't actually, I can't say that I have experience um, in having to explain that that process. So for me, in the beginning when I was just assisting in theatre, I mean, you're literally with the surgeon, so it's all within scope of practice, so that wasn't an issue. When I was asked if I wanted a permanent position, this I was actually quite lucky in that sense where the surgeon asked me, and they asked me to provide a scope of practice and that I should tell him what I think I can do in the practice. So basically we sat together and we discussed and we set up uh, everything that I can do and I'm allowed to do within my scope of practice. So that was addressed from the start. So that was quite positive. But I think don't be scared if you're hesitant or anything, because sometimes there is a gray area where you wonder or they want you to do something. I haven't experienced that before, but I think to the students, don't be scared to address that because they're not going to be out responsible when something goes wrong is on you. So I think never be scared to stand your ground. And also just want to end off to say, actually, um, while I was in the public sector or working as a student, I like heard a lot of negativity about BCMP and clinical medical practice and clinical associates. And since working in the, in the private sector, I've only heard positive things. The private sector is actually, they're looking for clinical associates. They just don't know we exist. But when I tell them the gap that we can fill, they actually get quite excited and they all said they wish they knew us. I was actually also quite lucky because the surgeon I work with, he was, I think he worked with one of the first cohorts of clinical associates when he was still um, an intern. So I think he got that interaction session with the clinical associates. So he already knew what we did, but not a lot of surgeons or a lot of doctors do. And I think that's the most important to advertise what we can do as clinical associates and the gaps that we can fill. So it's all about information. 
Thank you very much to our guests uh, for joining us. I think um, this has really been a, a productive and informative session. I hope our audience really saw how diverse clinical associates are. You all come from different corners and, and workplaces showing how you've used your, your skills. And, and one nice golden thread that I picked up is really about go out for the opportunities. Um, so thank you for, for that message. But thank you very much to everyone for joining. Um, please do note, we will continue. We will invite more clinical associates. We'll invite more clinical associates every single first Monday of every single month. And please, if you know clinical associates you'd like to hear from, please do share with the division. We'll ask them to come speak to everyone. Invite friends from University of Pretoria, Walter Sulu University, let us build this community and, and, and share the information and experiences that we have. Um, but please have a good evening and join us next time. Mm -hmm.